C box. So I've got the absolute D36. I've had it for I've had it for a while. Um, but a common thing you'll notice with him is that paint on legs. So if you look down here, look, all the chips off from having your attachments on. So like your keeping it arms, your spray bars and feet rests. It all it all chips off. And my idea is to get that back to silver because I feel if I keep coating it or have it powder coated, spray it, it's just going to keep happening. It's happened to nearly every box I've had that's had sort of painted legs on. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to freshen it up by taking all the paint off and getting them from black back to silver um, using some of this stuff. Uh, paint and varnish remover, six quid for a bottle. Don't know if it's going to be any good. I wanted nitro molds because that's always worked well for me in the past, but they were not in stock anyway. Uh, so I'm going to have a stab at removing paint. Now, theme of the box is white and black. And although it won't look, it'll look a bit out of place with silver legs, I don't really want to be sat there with paint chipping off my legs all the time. So my plan is to uh, remove all the paint off the legs. Um, I've got no to lose because ultimately, if it don't look right or it's rubbish, I could have them painted or powder coated again. But I'm just, I'm just not that bothered about whether I've got paint on my box legs or not. So I'm gonna try and freshen it up. Try and remove as much of this as I can by dabbing this stuff on, and it's meant to be a really easy job. So. We'll come back to this one in a minute and see how we go. So what you want to do, when you've got your legs off, you want to separate the inserts from your leg because they're all extendable legs on D36. And to take them off, it's simple. So instead of nitromores in this or paint stripper in it, with the collar on, because you've got to remember this bit here sits in your clamping, your, your clamping collar on your box so you won't see it. So you could just do it from there upwards and you won't see this bit, but for the sake of attention to detail or self-preference, all you do is undo the locking wheel and then the collar comes off. Okay, so it actually goes through that hole there in the leg. There, look. So it goes through the collar and into the hole and that's what clamps your so to intermediate leg inside your main one. So what you want to do is chuck your hand wheel back in there like that. Chuck them off to one side. And then once you've got all your sort of external parts of your legs, you can now trim all these and get your paint off. Um, option is to take out those. I might push a rod through and just knock them out, just for the sake of paint stripper might, it might damage it if you go it on there with it being moulded plastic so I don't want to risk damaging those so I'll, I'll push them out and then you just go a bare tube then to nitromores well paint strip, I'm going to nitromores put your inserts I mean they're scratched anyway because they what take most of clamping when you sort of tightening your box leg up if you look there look it's all these little notches here where I've adjusted my box leg so an option is to take these off and do these as well. But because these are inside my box majority of the time and most of the platforms I fish, it's either my absolute platform or a normal fishing peg. They're all pretty much flat and I don't really need to do much adjusting. And even we a little bit showing, it's going to be right underneath my box anyway. So not going to bother doing those at the minute. I might do them in the future. Um, but for the sake of just... Everything that's external, that's all scratched, like, if you look at that one there, look. You know, that's, that's on show. And, um, and besides those scratches, the boxes are stunning. And I don't want it to be ruined by having all these scratches all over. So, I'm not going to bother doing inserts. I'm just going to do outers. And then, if I, if I want to do them later on, I can do. But these are main focus anyway. Now I've got all those together, 
push all these lines away. And then you want a nice working surface to work on. So what I've got here, I've got a um, just an old table that we used to have in the kitchen. Not really much good. It's got paint on it. Do a lot of decorating on here. Do some kids' practical painting homework on here. So it don't really matter. Um, so anything can happen to the surface, and you know you don't want to be using your missus' best kitchen table. Um, so I'm gonna brush some of this on. It says on it you want temperature between five and twenty-five degrees. So from what I've worked out, is just do it indoors or if. You, if I mean, even a garage might be a bit cold this time of year. We are in the beginning of March and it is still quite cold, but I've gone with kitchen because it's at back at house, plenty of windows open, um, and I don't want this stuff smelling out. out. So uh, get it to the right temperature, and then you've got less chance of you having to do it over and over and over again until you get it right. So I'm going to start off with that now. So things you'll need, uh, choose and choose a mug, quite relevant, nice wide brush, I think it's an uh, inch and a half, use a bigger one but I just want it so it's convenient to fit inside a decent sized mug and not be too big and gate everywhere, um, and then your, your paint remover, so idea is, pour some in there, and what I know from previous efforts are, not too much, so you want enough in there like that, now, the idea is to put a coat on, leave it standing for a while, and then um, come back and apply another coat. And then it should scrape off. The idea is that it reacts with the paint, the paint's lifted from the metal, and then it'll just scrape off afterwards. But I mean, it's worked better for me in the past to put it on, wait for it to all sort of start and remove itself from the surface, like the metal surface, and then give it a pressure wash. But, each to their own. Uh, so, transfer required amount of the remover into a suitable container. Uh, apply a generous coat to the surface to be stripped uh, with a suitable brush at a rate of one liter per square meter of surface. Uh, leave for approximately one hour. Apply a second coat. Once the remover is penetrated into the uh, substrate, Scrape off, leaving the surface as clean as possible. Uh, rub down, stripped area, using a scrubbing brush or stainless steel wool and water. Rinse water and allow it to dry. So that's what we're going to do. And anybody wanting to to get the inserts out, easiest way is to get a broom handle. Once you've took the insert out, put it inside your leg like that. Then just get a couple of, see how it's coming off. Now look, straight out. So nice and simple. You've not got to shove a screwdriver under edges and destroy it. And then when it comes to putting it back in, you can simply just put it on and just give it a, a knock on a like, table surface like this, for example, and push it back in. That way you save damaging those and you've just then got a nice hollow leg. So you've got no interference with damaging any of the working parts. So go to strip down as much as you can. It's nice and simple. This is just a normal broom handle off a yard brush. So they're pretty much all the same size. Just go inside, knock the caps off. Nice and easy job. So there you are, nice and simple. Took 30 seconds to knock all the caps out. Um, time to start putting this on. the last one which is probably the worst one um well, i've left this one to the last because there's obviously less paint to come off and i think we are chipped it is you know i'll be able to scratch most of that off without any of this but i've doused all the rest i'm not generous amounts i'm coming on but i'm just covering it um with just enough that i know there's not any spaces left or anything and what i'm doing i'm standing up on the table you can see i've stood them up so he's laying them down I mean, some smart Alex will probably hang them up. Um, I think if I stand them up that way, it stops any 
cool air getting inside them from either end um, and cooling down the process because it, 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 you do stress on the bottle that it's got to be between sort of 5 and 25 degrees for it to even uh, work um, and even just brushing some of this on now it's lifting it up straight away so what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave those to stand for an hour there's plenty on there I'll come back to it and then it might need another coat. I'm going where it says on the bottle, but from doing it in the past, sometimes you come back and it's most of it's already off. This isn't paint like you get on a car. It's not a professional paint job with two stage paints and lacquers. It's a very basic satin black um, that's been put onto some legs that get general use. So one, it's already damaged paint, so it's going to penetrate a bit quicker. Two, it spends most of its time outside without any prote protective coating on it. And three, it's a very thin paint as well. So if I just show you at the top of this one, this one's already coming away a lot, if you can just see that. And it's a really one coat of paint job and uh, should be an easy process. So I'm gonna leave them for an hour and then I'll come back and see if we've uh, got any uh, progress. But again, if it needs another coat, I'll put another coat on. I picked a full day where I'm not fishing, I'm not doing anything, so I'm uh, leaving there. Plenty of time for them to soak, and um, yeah, come back in a minute. So, I'll just show you this. It's only been half an hour. I'm just gearing in sight. This is one that I did a lot, from the second to last. See it bubbling off there, look, where it's going to paint. And it's sort of the same story all the way around, really. So uh, I'll leave that again for another half an hour. See this one here, look. Really getting underneath that one. See how it's just flaking off? So, yeah, look as well underneath. So another half an hour, I'll get another coat and then leave it again for another hour. But so far, so good. All right, so an hour's passed, and as you can see on that one, see how it's all just falling off. So that's what you want, especially if they're scratched. It means it can penetrate that a bit easier. It will get in. Uh, paint stripper will get in where the paint's actually chipped, and it'll attack it better that way. But anyway, that's the first hour up. So what I'm going to do now is. I'm going to uh, put a second coat on, leave it for another hour, and then we'll come back to it after that. So, that's the last one. I don't know, I mean, I'm just going off where it says on the bottle, but two coats, do one and do one an hour later. I mean, it's coming off, it's, it's working really well, but I've just done one in the middle. I think it was that one. It doesn't really look like it's done much. Time will tell. Last half an hour and all that. I will really douse them ones up. I'll leave them and uh, I'll come back to it again another hour's time. So 11.52. I'll push it that bit further. I'll come back at one and uh, see how we get on. But working well on top, seems to be doing its job. And uh, hopefully afterwards, we'll have to scrape it all off and have some nice bare silver legs. I scrape it, take one of these, and it should just come off nice and easy. it 
Nice and simple. Some have still got a few bits on that just paint are a bit thicker on those areas. It's normally on ends. Probably how they painted in uh, manufacturing. That's pretty much it. So it's all off. A few bits of like surface gunk on there and a bit of distortion here from where that's been like near water majority of the time. So that's why that's happened. But what I'm gonna do now is uh, get a bit of wire wool. I'm just gonna go over it, see if we can tidy it up um, and get worse to it off really. You've got to remember that these bits are gonna be covered by your knuckle with your wheel on, your locking wheel, and your attachment's gonna be at the bottom of a lot of these. So, I mean, make it look the best you can, but you know, it, it's not a Gucci or Prada tackle box. I'll do my best to clean bits of gunk off that are left. I mean, that's just thick bits of paint that there that won't come off. But best way I find to do is, after you've gone through your cycle of putting your paint stripper on, scrape it off and then run it under. I've got a sink just over there. Run it under a warm tap and it just comes off under your hand, under the palm of your hand. So scrape off the majority um, and then any bits you can't get, if you just rub your thumb on them like that, that's what tends to get all the rest of the bits off. So I'm going to get these a clean up now um, so we can tart them up a bit more for a prune back on box. Sorted. What I'm doing now is I'm going to chuck the inserts back in all the legs. So that's all then done. Feet back on. Make sure you line up this with the hole in the leg so this can go through it. Otherwise, you'd be in a world of mess. Um, but like I said earlier, left and black. Just can't really see it when it's inside. Saves me another job. And uh, all my top caps are back in as well. So, give them a clean from that box. and scuffs just back down to bare metal uh, what I do now is if you're going to wet wire wool it it'll be nearly chrome after a bit so unless you want it like a brushed aluminium look don't wet it or put any lube on it it took me space for a couple of hours because I have to wait for nitromorse to kick in well it's a dial paint stripper I've got not nitromorse but I think nitromorse is probably going to be better I went with this one because it's cheaper and it does not smell at all. There's no smell to it whatsoever. It doesn't say anything on it about using uh, gloves or masks or anything, so I imagine it being quite safe. Um, but that's it, that's box without any paint on legs. A couple of tips while I'm here, just through owning a couple of these. Um, your hand wheels down here, look, them. Make sure you've always got them to the back on your front legs. Because if you're going up onto any pegs, uh, like if anyone knows Aston Park or like a decking peg and the front of the peg's got like a board here. And sometimes if you get that wrong or up against it too much, you can actually bend it upwards. So always loosen that and just twist your leg around so it's facing backwards. And same again with rear ones. Just always chuck them so the inwards. Middle ones don't really matter as much, but always chuck them so they're facing inwards and it saves them going bent. Last thing you want is that snapping off. Because it'll it'll bust your it'll bust your knuckle under that collar with threads in. But uh, yeah, pretty straightforward. That box of wire on there, about the best part of a year and a half. Um, ready for a new one, but this one seems to be looking after me quite well. So yeah, nitromorse uh, or any paint stripper, dial paint stripper. I think it was about seven quid or something daft. 
let them soak for an hour, put another coat on, um, then strip it off. I used uh, an old screen scraper, windscreen scraper, and I scraped for a car. Um, and it sort of worked in its own really, because after scraping it for a bit, the scraper formed like a bit of a, an arc shape in it, which was the same sort of contour of its legs. So it helped with scraping it off after a bit, but leaving it on long enough, you could see in the video, some of it was just peeling off. Take your inserts out, uh, get rid of any plastic. I don't think it will do any harm, but it might discolour it, so always get rid of them. Um, yeah, don't look too bad. I think from a, from a distance it looks alright. Personally, I prefer the black and white, I prefer the black legs, but I think unless you haven't powder coated, I do know people that have had legs powder coated in the past and it has still come off. Unless you can have them powder coated regularly and you, you know, and you're bothered, then, then do that. But just for a quick fix and to uh, top up a little bit, it's a, uh, it's a cheap job to do. Anyone can do it. And uh, yeah, so box saved. Uh, remember to like and subscribe. I'm no craftsman when it comes to fishing tackle, but if I can try and save anything from a scrapyard I will do and to save going out I mean option was to go and buy new legs I think it's 35 quid for a pair we'll chuck some new legs on it but then you're left with six legs on your old box and you just think you know strip paint off them looks all right boxes you know it's starting to got a bit of paint chipping off somewhere on the foot plate as well there look so you know it they do see their age after a bit but if you come to sell your box on afterwards just looks a bit more presentable some kid might think oh i want that one looks all right don't see scratch legs so yeah and then while i've got it out and i've given these a clean i've got wd out and a cloth all these little moving parts in your feet down here just give them a quick squirt don't worry about wiping off any excess just leave it on and that'll help just keep it from like corrosion and rusting and stuff because these bits down here they do get, get ignored a lot and these are ones that are more prone to being uh, mud and water and what have you so they do take some hammering even though you can't see inside leg like there are a bit of corrosion on video i did manage to get a bit of it off but like i say it's going to be covered if you, even if you get a bit off like you, you're going to be doing it a favor you don't want to be scrubbing it all day so yeah i'll see you back up next one